Scott, good morning. Uh, my name is David. Uh, I'm a real estate agent. Uh, I'm calling about your home for sale. Uh, I was wondering, are you still for sale by owner or have you already listed with a real estate agent? In real estate, you have to go find your business. The, the agents that survive, the agents who are long-term agents, never stop prospecting, ever. I've been in the industry for over 30 years. Um, I began uh, in Los Angeles in 1987 as a real estate agent and sold real estate in LA for 10 years and uh, then relocated to Orange County. And uh, at that time, in 1997, I, I got involved in the coaching business. And uh, I really enjoyed that aspect, you know, that angle of the business, uh, helping other agents succeed. Uh, and I've been doing that for the last uh, 22 years. When you contact him, what do you want to say? What's your dialogue? If you don't know the language of selling, you could make a thousand prospecting calls. And if you don't know uh, the questions to ask, if you don't know how to handle any objections, if you don't know how to close for an appointment, what good does it do? So the one thing is always, it always begins with learning the, uh, the dialogue, learning what are these mega agents, what are these top producing agents saying when they're in the marketplace? What are they saying when they're working with a buyer? What are they saying? What questions are they asking when they're presenting to a seller? It's really the first thing, the one thing, you got to learn the language of selling. Remember, the motivation isn't really where he's going, it's, it's what? Why? Why he's going there. Why? So the dialogue would sound like this. Um, you know, Mr. Seller, uh, do you still want to get to name the city so you can, whatever that might be, um, begin your retirement, whatever it is? I want you to start with that to reaffirm his motivation. Okay. And then ask him, uh, why does he believe that the property has not sold? If you really want to get result, you need someone to push you. To any agent that has lasted uh, understands that you need to prospect, uh, and they do it. You'll be prospecting your entire career. The reason for my call, uh, if I could sell your home and net you nearly the same amount of money you would net selling on your own, uh, but I do all the work, would you consider meeting with me and possibly uh, listing your home with me? It's interesting. You know, you hear agents say that they're, they don't like it, uh, although they sure like the results. So, yes, in the, it, perhaps while it's happening, it can be annoying. Uh, the phone rings and rings. No one picks up. You've got to dial it 10 times before you find someone. We actually have a name for it. We call that repetitious boredom. And uh, again, going through the process, sure, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging. Although everyone likes the results because they're finding their leads without having to buy them. And they're actually finding better leads. They're, they're literally finding people that want to do something. So they may not like it. Uh, it look, think of any job. Uh, there's parts of anyone's career they may not like. There's parts of my job that are more challenging that I'm, I don't necessarily enjoy doing, yet I have to do them. So it's just part of the job. Why did you decide to sell on your own rather than list with a, a professional realtor? The day begins with looking for new business. Oh, so you were listed. Oh, interesting and that agent wasn't able to get the job done. That's what all the successful agents do. They don't start their day working on business they already have. They always start their day looking for uh, new business. And they'll do that for several hours each morning. That is just a routine. So the successful agent will have a schedule they follow. And within that schedule, there's going to be four major components. The first would be uh, prospecting. The second would be following up on the leads that you found while you're prospecting. The third part of the, an agent's day would be going on appointments. You've got to be going out on appointments, either uh, listing appointments, visiting with sellers, or showing appointments, out taking buyers to uh, different properties. And then the fourth 
element or component of their day would be negotiating contracts and the administrative work that goes into uh, putting a deal together and making certain that deal closes. So they have a routine and within that routine there are those four basics. I'll say this, you can't dabble in it. Um, for this to work, it has to be a routine. It has to be part of your business day. Uh, agents that dabble in it, they might prospect for a couple of hours on a Monday, not do it Tuesday or Wednesday, get back to it on Thursday. It doesn't work. Uh, what works is making it a part of your routine, starting your day doing it, and starting by 8 a.m. He gave you permission to stay in contact with him. He, he told me last time that if nothing happened in 90 days... Prospecting means taking control of your business. Prospecting means that you're no longer waiting for someone to call you or find you. Uh, prospecting means control, that I, I have control over my business. Think of it this way. Um, some agents will get their business from open house, which there's nothing wrong with doing an open house. The issue is that you can't predict how many people are going to come by. You have no control over how many people will stop and take a look at that property. Um, when you prospect, say you're going to talk to 20 people a day, and you start on Monday and you make your 20 contacts, and then you make your 20 contacts on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. On Friday, you've talked to 100 people. That's control. And that's what prospecting means, taking control of the number of people you talk to. There's a direct correlation between the number of people you talk to each week, each month, each year, and the number of deals you'll do. So you've got to learn this dialogue that the successful agents use when they're lead generating, when they're following up, when they're on appointments, et cetera, et cetera, and then go out and say it. And uh, you know, it's a competitive business. Uh, you know, understand there's a lot of agents chasing after those listings, although not many of them uh, will stay the course if they hear no, and then they hear no again, and then they hear no again. They, 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 they just can't handle it. They don't know how to handle rejection. Um, when I'm coaching my clients, I, I, I have a saying, you know, get your feelings out of your business. You're not prospecting for a date. This is business. So you gotta check your feelings at the door, and obviously, be polite, you know, uh, come from contribution, you really want to help someone. Uh, and if they don't need your services, that's okay. There's plenty of other people that will. Uh, what taught me the most is that in our industry in real estate, no doesn't mean no. It just means not right now, not at this moment when we're speaking. It doesn't mean no. And, and at the beginning of my real estate career, if I heard no, I moved on. And, and did not follow up. I think in any sales position, the proper mindset would be being fearless. You know, really understanding that uh, we're just people talking to people and uh, they either want the services that I provide or they want the product that I'm selling or they don't. And in real estate, you know, you can't motivate someone to buy or sell a piece of property. Uh, they have to want to do it. And that's the beauty of selling real estate. You're not motivating them to do that. They already want to do it and then you show up. You facilitate that process. So it's actually, it's really not a lot of selling at all. They're already pre-sold by the time uh, a realtor gets into the picture. Yeah. I teach my clients to communicate with expireds. Next would be for sale by owners. Um, they've got a sign out front of their home, their phone number's on it, uh, although we know that at this point in time, they don't want to work with a realtor. And they don't want to work with a realtor because they don't see the value in what a realtor brings. Um, I think they need to be educated on, on what does an agent bring? Why are you paying an agent? Because it really isn't to sell the house. The house will sell on its own. It's to make certain the deal gets through the pending or the escrow process. And, and closes because you don't sell a house once. You know, you sell it several times. You sell it, you know, to the agents in the marketplace. You sell it to their buyers. You sell it to the home inspector. You sell it to the appraiser. That's where the real skill comes in. It's not selling the house. The house sells itself, basically. And then a, a smart agent, a, a professional, skilled agent, is able to shepherd the deal through the pending process and get the deal closed.
There's only one change I would make here. Yes. You're saying... You know, one thing that I'll teach all of my students is selling is asking questions. It's not talking and telling. You're not selling when you're doing that. You're not gathering any information. So the idea is, um, how do you communicate with your, with your friends and family? Well, your friends and family would know you're in the business. And it, it goes back to coming from contribution, letting them know, look, if you, if you need information, I'm happy to help you. Or give them information. Hey, I want to share some good news. You know, last year we had a X percent increase in home values. Uh, who do you know that would like to take advantage of this? Or, um, you know, right now uh, in our market, homes are on the market for X number of days. And the buyers that are uh, buying, many of them are paying the list price. Some are paying more than the list price. Who do you know that wants to take advantage of this? So it's, it's, it's all in how you approach it. Again, a lot of agents are reluctant to uh, go to their friends, family, um, because they're, they feel like they're taking something. Well, flip it around. Don't take anything. Let them know that you are available to help them if they have questions or they need information about anything real estate. That's how. The ones that don't succeed in this business don't treat it like a real job. They, they get into it for um, some of the wrong reasons. They, they get into it thinking they don't have to show up at a certain time. They, they can work from their schedule. And uh, you can, although if you're going to succeed at this business at a high level, it's, uh, it's a lot of, um, you gotta put in the hours, you gotta put in the time and treat it like a real job. The mistake a lot of agents make is they use the prospecting call as uh, a way to get hired. Right, over the phone. Over the phone. They're not gonna hire you over the phone. Right. They, so you need to get face to face. So let's keep it brief on the call. Um, I'm following up uh, like we discussed. I'm curious, you know, do you still want, fill in the blank, motivation. Right. Um, when can we spend 15 minutes together? And I, I'll show you you know, what I'm doing to find qualified buyers and then go right into the close. In fact, we talked about this. Since you've already been to his uh, apartment, right. where do you want to bring him? I would love to bring him here. That's right. To my territory. That's right. Bring him here to your, your office. It's an easy business. That's my message. It's not a complicated business. And uh, never forget we're just people talking to people. And if they are motivated to buy or sell, they will hire an agent. Why, why not you?